Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for praying for us. I'm super excited. This is November. Can you imagine? Like we're almost at the end of the year. Um, I don't even know when we started 2021, but I, I usually would like to give people a chance to just, you know, just say a word of thanksgiving to God. Um, you know, it's it's really an opportunity to be here at this time, especially like with everything going on around in the world. You know, a lot of things are happening. So I usually like to give us an opportunity for one minute to just like appreciate God for everything, appreciate him for life, appreciate him for, you know, his faithfulness. And um, if it's okay, I'll lead us in one song. If you can sing that song with me, it's a very simple song. Just go ahead and sing the song. It says, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. Sing it one more time. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. Amen. All right. I am super excited. We're going to get started real quick. God is so good. Thank you so much for everyone who has joined. I'm going to be doing shout outs at the end. So wait for that if you have time. Um, so today we're going to be talking about Abraham and Sarah, like you saw um, in the poster. If you got the poster or maybe you were invited by somebody, um, we're going to be talking about their journey of faith. And we're going to be exploring their lives. One thing I would say is um, if you are joining for the first time, welcome. Here it's very interactive. We want you to hear how you're thinking about certain scriptures in the Bible. I want to hear about how you're thinking about certain Bible characters so that we can brainstorm together. All right. All right. So the first thing is when you hear about Abraham and Sarah, what comes to mind? Anything. When you hear about their story, like what, what is one thing that, you know, that calls, that comes to mind and that just like, you know, just any, anything that comes to mind, feel free to put it in the chat um, when you think about Abraham and Sarah. It's a bit quiet here today. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just moving to get faithfulness i love that thank you nicole yeah absolutely faithfulness i really love that yeah faith thank you abby faith sustenance and to get wow i love togetherness i love that word um Mekli, i saw you you said um faith awesome yeah pastor bola abraham's blessing yeah amen i love that yeah 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 patience Mekli. thank you wow wow large hearts wow I love you. Thank you, Auntie Tom. <laughs> yeah, my mom put there, father of faith. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yes, absolutely. These are, yeah, these are honestly the things that are definitely well associated with Abraham. And I'm so excited that we're pointing them out. Awesome. So, you know, like we do it here, I like to tell a story, right? So I'm going to give you a story of Abraham and Sarah, see if you were in today's, you know, days. I'm going to try to contextualize it. Amen. I like that faithfulness of age long promise wow yep and we're going to be talking about that thank you so much ma all right so um let's think about sarah right so you know how the bible talks about sarah and the bible talks about that she was very beautiful okay so now when i talk about beautiful let me contextualize it for you it's not just any type of beauty it's the kind of beauty that at like 60 70 if you were in today's world oh yeah obedience i love that i love that Thank you. <laughs> if you were to be in today's world, Sarah is getting guys sliding into her DMs at like 70. Okay. Now I'm not, we're not even mincing words. So Sarah is in her 60s, 70s, and kings are trying to be married to her. The Bible says she was that beautiful. So I think about Sarah in her days, like if she were to be young you know, like in her 20s, if they were doing like beauty pageants in those days or like beauty, you know, like Miss World, she would have won it hands down, okay? And if you think about, you know, in those days, the Bible, if you look, if you read the Bible, when the Bible describes women, the Bible always emphasizes on beauty. 
it always emphasizes when somebody is beautiful, you know, like he said, talked about Rebecca, talked about Esther, you know, and some people, he'll just be quiet so that he can cause, you know, the Bible will just be quiet about their beauty for national peace, okay? But, <laughs> so that tells you something that beauty was such a valuable thing in those days. Like the Israelites valued physical appearance right um, and that's why you can see in different stories like the story of Samuel when he was about to anoint you know some of the sons of Jesse the Bible says that he wanted to anoint the one that was physically buff you know the one that all of us would go to you know very fast and he could and God told him God was like I don't look out the outside man looks at the outside so the point I'm trying to make here is like in Sarah's days as a young girl she had it all together she was the kind of girl that you would envy you know, you'd be like, oh my God, I want your type of hair. I want your skin type. I want your hair type. Because she had it all together. Shape, she was there. Hair, thick. Everything thick, okay? All right. Now you get the picture. So it's time for her to get married. Obviously, there's so many guys trying to... <clears throat> excuse me. There's so many guys trying to, be, to get married to her. They're just flocking, flocking, flocking. She ends up with this guy called Abraham. For the purpose of this discussion, let's give him a short, you know, a short um, version of his name. Let's call him, let's call him Abe, okay? So she sees Abe, they like each other. Abe is like, you know, the Bible doesn't tell us if he's handsome, but he had some change in his pocket. So that was good for security of a woman, amen? If you're a woman, just give me a thumbs up in the chat. <laughs> so she gets married to him, okay? And, you know, life is going well. You know, if it was in today's world, it would, they would have a, like a, um, a hashtag thank you auntie on instagram like couple goals everything is going fine life is moving i want to be like this couples he's so abraham is like married to the most beautiful woman in the planet um they're having a good time but something happens they get married one year um you know they're still in their honeymoon stage so it's okay no child yet all right life is good two years three years four years and the years are going by and there's no child. So they go from being the most admirable couple to being the couple that's most talked about, but for something different and for something almost negative. And that brings me to the first journey or the first phase of the wait. It is realization. Um, let's go to genesis for those of you who are like hey she's not going to read the bible she's just saying stories she's going to read the bible amen i love the bible as much as you do because i know that's why you are here and i really appreciate you for being here let's go to genesis the first time that we hear abraham and sarah mentioned in the bible is in genesis chapter 11. genesis chapter 11 um, that's where we hear them being mentioned first. So Genesis chapter 11, if you want to turn your Bible there, whether you have a soft Bible or you have a, <laughs> or you have a hard Bible, Genesis chapter 11, verse 27 to 30. Genesis 11, 27 to 30. If anybody's there, can somebody read for me? Can I ask that somebody who's on the call reads? Um, if you don't mind, read for us Genesis 11, verse 27 to 30, real quick. Anybody there? Genesis is the first book of the Bible, by the way, if you are looking for it. <laughs> okay, let me read real quick. Um, let me read real quick. So it says in Genesis chapter 11, verse 27, now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot, all right? I'll jump to verse 30 because of time. It says, but Sarai was barren and she had no child. So if you look at typically when the Bible is calling siblings, how they were born, it calls the first one, usually first. So what we hear from here almost is that Abraham was the first child, okay? And the Bible says in verse 27, Terah begat Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. So he had two brothers, Nahor and Haran. And the Bible says Haran begat Lot. So Haran had a child. His other brothers were having children, but not him. So the stage of realization in your wait is that stage where it's like everyone has left you behind, all right? Everyone is having the thing that you thought you were going to have and it's been quite a while and you are still not having it. Let me bring this down to normal. Let me be practical about it. You all know me, I like to be practical. 
everyone is getting married, but you are still single as a dollar bill, okay? <laughs> you are in your 30s. You are seeing everyone get married, but nothing for you. Everyone is getting a job, but you are still trying to get a job. Everyone is having, you know, whatever it is that it's almost like everyone around you is picking up, but it's just you. It's that stage of realization that you just know that, man, this is not the timing that I planned for. You know, but it's interesting when we think about timing because the Holy Spirit gave me an illustration on timing. Um, and sometimes what we think is delay is not necessarily delay. So the Holy Spirit gave me an explanation about this several years ago. I hope you guys are not asleep. We're gonna have another interactive session. I hope you are following me. I'm trying to take you on a journey, okay? I used to be in consulting and that meant that, you know, and I know I have some of my consulting friends here. So whoop, whoop, I'll give you guys a shout out so you guys can relate. And we, I traveled a lot, right? And so when I first started traveling, I had this phobia of missing my flight. So I'm the girl that you would see at the gate an hour, 30 minutes before my flight leaves, okay? Because I'm not trying to miss a flight, never. And so the thing though is that when you get to the gate an hour, 30 minutes before your flight, it means that you have to wait for an hour, 30 minutes. And so what would happen is that other people, and usually for a gate, a gate has different flights arriving through it. So before your own flight, there could be other, um, other flights that are taking off from that gate or landing at that gate. So you can be at a gate one hour, 30 minutes, and it's not yet your time. But then there's other people that are getting on a flight. And the Holy Spirit said to me, the difference between waiting and delay when you are waiting, you are waiting for an appointed time. When your flight time is at 12.30, thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, and you get to the gate at 10.30, you would have to wait till 12.30 to get on your flight. Now, if you become impatient and you maybe talk your way to the air hostess or the pilot and you tell them, you know what, please, I just need to get out of this place. The highest that would happen is that you will get to another destination. So if you were trying to go to, I don't know, Las Vegas, or you were trying to go to South Africa, for example, and you were just so impatient and you're just like, I just want to get on a flight. You can land in another country that you weren't planning for. Versus a delay is when you get to the gate and it's 12.30 and your flight has not yet shown up. That's how you know it's a delay. And the Holy Spirit, after giving me that explanation, asked me a question. Who gave you the flight time that you are working with? When you go to the in front of the air hostess and you're complaining to them that I'm being, and you're complaining to them about being impatient, the first question they'll ask you is, can I get your flight information? And they would ask you, where did you get that information from? As I talk to you, who is somebody on a wait today, I want to ask you, where did you get your waiting information from? Who gave you the scheduled time for your miracle? Did the world tell you that if you, are not, if you don't have children at age 40, that's the end? Did they tell you that if you are not married at so, so, so age, that's the end? Did they tell you that if you cannot achieve this and this at so, so age, that's the end? Is that what God told you? Apparently, you might be working with another person's schedule instead of the one that God originally has for you. All right, we keep going. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. The second stage of your wait is called, I call it the isolation or the separation. Actually, let me call it separation. It's the separation stage. The separation stage is very interesting because it comes in two parts. One, humans separate you by themselves. And the second one, God separates you. Let's read um, the second stage. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. Let's read Genesis chapter 12. Verse two, verse two, just Genesis chapter 12, verse two. Can I ask somebody to read? Is everyone feeling shy? <laughs> if this is a I safe space. Okay. Please go ahead, Ma. Genesis chapter 12, verse two. Thank you so much. And I will make of thee a great nation. Amen. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. Amen. And thou shalt be a blessing. Amen. Mom, please, can you read for us Genesis 12, 1? Okay. 
Yes, ma'am. Genesis 12, 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, Amen. and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Thank you so much, ma. I appreciate you. Thank you, mommy, for it. That's my mom, by the way. Um, yes. Okay. So the first thing, the, what we see there is God is saying, get thee out of thy land. Now, let me paint a picture for you. You see, sometimes when you're in the wait, your waiting process automatically separates you. And let me practicalize this. You see, for example, when you are still trying to, <laughs> when you are still trying to get a house, for example, maybe you are still living in rented apartment like some of us. Me, I'm claiming my house in Jesus' name in 2022. All right. And they are having landlords association party. Your friends are having like the association of landlords. By default, they are not going to call you to that meeting. Okay. Even if your best friend, ah, Leko Satalabaya, even if your best friend was a landlord, by default, you cannot be in that meeting. If all your friends are all landlords and you are the only one still having an apartment, by default, they would not invite you to that meeting. If all your friends are married and they are having marriage talk, they are going out on marriage hangouts. By default, you will not be in that meeting. I'm imagining Sarah, you know, she had all these friends. They used to hang out together, but then it's the next hangout and they're like, oh, it's going to be a play date. And they're like, should we invite Sarah? No, no need to invite Sarah because she doesn't have any child. How will she fit into this atmosphere? No need. So by, by default, you are being separated from everyone. So you just be hearing that, oh, you'll be seeing pictures on Instagram that your friends hang hunger. And then you text them and you're like, why didn't you guys invite me? Oh, no, it's, it was for married women. Oh, no, it was for women who had kids. Oh, no, it was for women who have jobs. Or women who are managers at their workplace. Or women who are directors. You start to become separated. The second aspect of that is that God himself will separate you. And I think that's the beautiful part. And the reason usually why God wants to separate you is God wants to start to build a personal relationship with you. So when God would start the journey of Abraham, God would ask Abraham, leave your father's house. Leave everything that you've known. Leave everybody that you're familiar with. You see, I think that it would have been easier for Abraham to leave because there was nothing that associated him with anybody in his city anymore. You know, I think it would have been harder, I'm sorry, for Abraham to leave if he already had kids, you know, life was going well. Now Thanksgiving is coming. Some of us are, you know, paranoid about going for the next Thanksgiving hangout because they're gonna ask you questions. Ah, tell me, Alpha, when are you bringing your husband? I'll, don't worry, after this call, I'll tell you the answer you give to them, okay, remind me. <laughs> <laughs> a very prophetic answer but no um so it's separation right you get to that point where and god is separating you because separating you because god wants to build god wants to start to build a relationship with you and you know the context i want to provide with you there is like abraham his father's house they served idols okay his father's house they weren't really christians even though noah who was their ancestor was a christian but somehow they were into idol idol worshiping so God had to separate Abraham. I want somebody to sing that in. God had to separate Abraham because God wanted to build relationship with him. Sometimes the miracles that you're seeing around you is nothing compared to what God wants to do in your life. And that's why when God separates you, he just doesn't want to give you he just doesn't want to build a relationship with you, but he wants to give you a bigger picture. And that leads me to the next stage, the bigger picture. That's stage three, the bigger picture. And the, the, the Bible verse for that is in Genesis chapter 13. See, I'm taking you on a journey. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this ride. We will land safely and we will land victoriously. Our plane will not crash. All right. Um, my, my dad, who is who is into aviation, is here too. So he's supporting us um, from an aviation standpoint. <laughs> All right. Um, so Genesis chapter 13. Can somebody read for us, if you don't mind, Genesis chapter 13 from verse just Genesis chapter 13, verse 2. Genesis chapter 13, verse 2. 
can I ask that somebody reads this first? If you are, if you are still following, if you have not slept, if you have not uh, dozed off, give me a thumbs up on the chat. Somebody wants to read for us. Go ahead. <laughs> and Abraham was very rich in cattle, Amen. in silver and in gold. Amen. Thank you so much, Mommy Rike from Ireland. God bless you, Mark, for reading. Abby, mm. I saw that you raised up your hand. Did you have something to say? I want to make sure I didn't miss that. Um, no, I was going to volunteer to read, but mommy beat me to it. So that's fine. Oh, good. okay. All right. Thank you so much. Yep. We have so many Bible scriptures coming up. I'll pick you by default for the next one. Thank you so much. So the third, um, the third perspective I said is the bigger picture. Oh, thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. This one is so good. There's sometimes that you're asking God for a miracle but well, you are very short-sighted about the miracle you are asking God for. Your mind is too small to grasp the extent of what God wants to give you. Abraham, was, he, was, he wanted a child so bad, but God was trying to build more than that. God was trying to build generational legacy for Abraham. God was trying to build a whole generation that would be associated with him. And so God had to take Abraham out and begin to show him all of the other components that has to do with his miracle and that what God wanted to do about for him was not just about having a child. God wanted to build wealth for Abraham. If you look at that Bible scripture that our mommy just read for us, the Bible says that Abraham was rich. How are you asking God for a child and God is making you have money? Have you ever had that experience before? You have been trusting God for a child or you've been trusting God for a spouse, or you've been trusting God for a house, and God is giving you other miracles. So maybe you were trusting God for a job, God brought you a man, and you're like, it's not even a man I need at this point, I just need to be promoted at work. The Holy Spirit was revealing to me that, aside from God didn't just want Abraham to raise any type of children. God wanted him to raise children that could carry a legacy of wealth. So Abraham was just asking for children, but God wanted him to have wealthy children. And so the only way that Abraham could born children or could, be, or could deliver or could have children that are wealthy is when Abraham himself has, been able, has gotten wealth. And so God will start to bless Abraham because the miracle that God wanted to do in the life of Abraham was or in the generation of Abraham was based on the miracle that God did in his life first. And so if you look at that, God will start to bless Abraham and make him wealthy so that Isaac will come out of Abraham and Isaac will be so rich that he was much, much more prosperous than an entire nation. If you go read about the story of Isaac. His other son, Jacob, became so rich that even though he was working as an employee of labor with Laban in the Bible, he was prospering more than Laban, that Laban had to tell him, go, you are doing too much. Imagine when you are working for your boss and you are prospering so much that your boss has to tell you, like, you need to go set up your own company because this is coming too much. And then he didn't stop with Jacob with Joseph as well. Joseph was even in the prison, but then even yet, like the prison could not hold bound the covenant of wealth that was upon him because at some point, Joseph became the prime minister. And then even that generation, if you go all the way down, it birthed a man called Solomon. I, Solomon was seen as the richest man on earth. Now, Abraham was asking God for just a child, but God was saying, I don't want to give you just a child. I want to build you a generation of wealth-carrying children. What are you asking God for that is so short-sighted? Lord, just give me a house. I just want a house that my children can play with and my family. But God is like, I want to give you a community. I want to give you an estate. I want to give you something bigger. I want to give you purpose. You know, there was a time in my life, and you know, I, I like to be transparent, right? There was a time in my life, I'll just be like, God, just one man. Are you telling me that <laughs> out of all the billions of men that are in this world, you cannot just give me one man to marry? How about God? It's, it's, it can't be that difficult. And then the Holy Spirit will tell me, like, it's not about a husband. You know, for many of us that are single today, if you, sorry, and I'm putting the single part, you know, because that's the one that, you know, is associated with me right now. And I'm not perturbed by it because I know y'all are going to come eat jollof rice at my wedding soon. You better type it on the chat if that's what you want, you know, for someone to come and do for you. 
But the miracle that God wants to give you is bigger than how you are seeing it. You just want a child. God is like, I want to give you a child that will become the next president. When all the presidents have failed, I want to give you a child that will come and change the structure. And it's all in timing. See, the thing that God was doing in Abraham was timed towards when the Israelites would be in slavery, towards when the Israelites would have no food. God timed it very effectively so that it would be at that time that Joseph can step in. If Abraham had had a child before that time, he would have disrupted the whole plan. God wants to give you something bigger. God just doesn't want to give you a child. God just doesn't just want to give you that promotion passed you by, that job passed you by because God wants to give you something bigger. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Before I go to my next point, I'm going to ask a very interesting question. And don't think about it too deep. You know, I just want to hear your thoughts. You know, we've read so many times about Abraham and we've heard that Abraham staggered not in faith. Abraham was very, you know, he, he was a faith-filled man. But when I read in Genesis, I also saw that there were times where Abraham lost faith. Do you think that faith in God is the absence of doubt. <laughs> this is not a theological question, by the way. It's not a question for argument. I just want to hear your thoughts. Do you think that faith in God means that you will never doubt? Oh, somebody said no. Thank you, Adobe. Do you want to talk about that? Thank you. Oh, wow. Liz, I'm hearing so many no's. Wow. Oh, somebody peeped into my notes. Pastor Bola, doubt is part of the faith process. Okay, can we, I want to hear, I want to hear people's opinion on this. Like, why do you think that faith, because the way I've seen faith though, I think faith is supposed to be that you don't doubt at all. Like you are, every day you wake up in the morning and you say, Shanda, God is amazing. Hallelujah. God is working. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me let me be quiet and hear somebody. Who wants to um, say something? <laughs> if I can say something, I think yes. that is what we were taught. Mm. Um, is you know to have you know to have faith without doubt. Mm. However, I think you know with our our own personal relationship with God, we understand that you know just like someone said in the chat, it's part of the faith process. So good and. You know, looking at Abraham and Sarah's um, waiting story, mm. you 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 can say Sarah doubted, right? When they were visited yeah. by, when they were visited by the three um, three um, people, right? The guest mm -hmm. that Abraham hosted, mm. and they were like, you know, by this time last year, and Sarah laughed. That was mm -hmm. part of our doubt, yeah, right? I'm sure she laughed because she was like me at this age, right? Mm. So. Um, I do believe that um, doubting is part of the faith process. However, we shouldn't we shouldn't stay in that too long, right? Yes. Um, I think you know when we doubt, we doubt, we doubt because you know either something has triggered our fears or, mm. or our anxieties or anything like that. But we should pick back ourselves up and fill up you know that fake cup with with god's promises and god's word so that's my perception of it i love it so good that blessed me thank you for sharing abby that's amazing i agree any other do we have any contradicting opinion though i'm not like i'm not opposed to like if you feel like uh -uh, how can you doubt god i was going to add that i think like faith or belief and unbelief are like two ends, two extreme ends of a spectrum. Mm. And I think that, you know, doubt is right in the middle. Wow. And I feel like most Christians, or personally, I feel like I move between complete faith and doubt most wow. times. And I think the problem is when you cross over to the other side and begin to move between doubt and complete unbelief. So it just depends on the season and what is happening in your life. And, you know, so I think that doubt is right in the middle. And most people just move between, most Christians move between 
total faith, depending on where you are, what is happening, and then doubt, which is right in the middle, and come back to it again, depending on the seasons in your life. And then what I think is scary is when you go over to the other side and begin to move between doubt and total lack of belief. So that is my own personal understanding. You know when the Bible says, Selah, <laughs> say no more. <laughs> I owe you a chilled bottle of Zobo in this California weather, Adobe. <laughs> you have done well. <laughs> no, that was really good. I loved it. I loved that illustration. That was so good. I have room for one more. I want to hear from maybe some of our daddies and mommies in the room, our older, you know, um, people. I know you are young at heart, but I want to hear your thoughts on this as well. <laughs> if that's okay. Any of our daddies, mommies, anybody wants to talk? <laughs> okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, like we said that, um, and thank God for the two speakers previously. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just saying that uh, when we are confronted with situations, at the end of the days, we are still flesh and blood anyway. Mm -hmm. And the fact that a doubt creeps in doesn't necessarily mean that our faith in God is completely gone. Wow. It's, it, I, I look at it, it's a way of resetting ourselves and getting back to basics and going back to God. Because at the end of the day, sometimes you, you come across some situation in life and then by the time the Lord God comes, comes through for you in that situation, you begin to wonder, why do I even have to bother mm -hmm. myself? <laughs> in the first instance. Wow. And the fact that you exercise that in, the, in that particular situation will be a sort of stepping stone for you next time to know that if God came through for me in that situation, so, <laughs> this time around, it will come. So it's, it's a sort of strengthening us like you learn. So, like where we come from, they say that you didn't suffer, you say you are wise. Just come and mm -hmm. tell me who is your teacher. Wow. So like, like everybody has rightly captured is a, is a process, is a process on, the, on our journey of faith. Mommy, that was so good, Ma. I like what you said, what you, what you said that hit me. You said, when you doubt, it takes you back to reset mode. I thought that was powerful. I thought that was yeah. powerful, Ma. Thank you. I loved it. Wow. I love these discussions. Thank you for, for contributing. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Did anyone else want to say something? Before we Can go. I say something? Yes, Ma, please go for it. Okay, for me, um, just to add to what every other person has said, it's always important to understand what is doubt and mm. then what is it. Mm. Um, I think doubt is focusing on the facts and like the circumstances around um, your circumstances can produce doubt and wow. then faith is focusing on the word of God. Hmm. And um, just like the, the second speaker said, uh, uh, um, it's always in between. Where hmm. are you? Do you hmm. understand? So doubt, I, I believe that are always there because there are facts. Hmm. Like telling you, like, imagine that wow. you're sick, the word of God tells you that you're healed hmm. and then medical diagnosis that are telling you this and this and you feel the symptoms hmm. and you can so doubts are there because the facts are also glaring hmm. but when you shift your eyes away from the facts and then focus on the word of god because the truth is that the word of god is the constant everything around is a variable hmm. so with the word of god so good. can twist the situation around to conform to what the word says so I think doubt is just the doubt is there because there are facts and that you can see it, you can read it, you can you also understand it. Yeah. Oh my, oh my, my, my. Thank you. See, God bless you. That was amazing. I, I think I like what you said. Um, you know, that doubt comes as a result of the facts, your situation around you. That's powerful. That's amazing. Thank you, Emanuela. I appreciate you. All right, um, we're going to uh, keep going. Did very I have one? Briefly one? Yes, sir. Go for it, sir, please. <laughs> uh, I will just analyze it in this way. Mm. What we call human factor 
is always rearing its head with the child of God. Mm. If you tilt to the side of God, your faith becomes strong. Mm. If you leave the domain of God's factor into the flesh, you will see otherwise. Mm. And so most of the time, the human factor must be subdued mm. and allow God's factor to prevail. Amen. Good. And God's factor comes through his word because the Bible says faith commit by, by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Amen. Doubt once in a while will come in or may come in as human. But when we turn towards God's side, the faith triumph. So good. So good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's my dad. <laughs> I appreciate Amen. you, sir. God bless you and honor you. I like how you said um, when we tune into God's word, doubt will be there. There's faith there, but one triumphs, like one wins. One has to win the battle. All right. Yes. Did I see Bernard? Did you want yes. to say something? Okay. Yeah. Let me comment on it. Uh, thank you. And I've really enjoyed the discussion so far. Yeah. Uh, I'm reading a verse from Mark chapter 11, mm. verse 22. And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Mm. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. So uh, the point here I would like to make is, you know, doubt may come in your mind, but you don't have to allow it to dwell in your heart. Mm. Once it yeah. goes into your heart, it's like you are, it's directly opposite to the faith. Because the thoughts, mm. we can't really control the thoughts that mm. comes in our mind, but you can control the thoughts that you dwell on. Mm. If you process the thoughts and it gets into your heart, it's like you have accepted it and that has become your word. So doubts will come because it, as uh, somebody rightly said on the line, like they are human factors and they are facts. So mm. facts will come in your mind. But once you allow it to get into your heart, it's like that is what you have accepted. Wow. And mm. Jesus will refer to you back here that you have to have faith in God because then you are not having faith at all. Mm. So once you have doubt and it creeps into your heart, then it becomes problematic. And faith will, in essence, will be like obedience to whatever God is saying. So once you have doubts, which is able to cripple you and get into your heart, then it's like you don't, your faith is almost not there. The only time you can really be sure of your faith is the doubts will come. That is human, mm. but it shouldn't creep into your heart. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, my Ghanaian uh, pastor. I call you pastor. <laughs> my Ghanaian, <Yeah>. Chale. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate you. That was amazing. That was amazing. And thank you for giving us a Bible reference. I always love Bible references for, you know, whatever we're saying. So I appreciate you. Yes, indeed. Um, allowing God's word to triumph is definitely constant, constant theme here. That's amazing. Thank you. Any other person wants to share? All right. I'm going to go to the next phase. And yeah, you all rightly said it. Like the next phase is the phase of doubt. And I put these two together and guilt. Just being realistic, okay? So I think about Sarah and, you know, she's at this point in her life where she's beginning to think. And the Bible doesn't say this, okay? It's just, I'm just telling the story. You know, let's say we're acting. Let's just pretend that we're acting a movie. You know, I think about Sarah and, you know, she, she must have been having some thoughts. You know, she would have been having some like um, flashback moments. And she would remember that one guy that was like, Sarah, ah, if only I can marry you. And the guy now has grandkids. But she got married to Abraham. And Abraham, everything is nada, you know, as we say in Spanish. And she's thinking, maybe we shouldn't have left Haran. Maybe we shouldn't have left where we're coming from. Maybe I made a bad choice to have married Abraham. Maybe this whole faith thing was, it's not making sense anymore. Mm. Um, maybe... Maybe I should have married that guy that God told me not to marry because he's fine. He's not like he's a bad person. You know, maybe I should have accepted that contract. Maybe, and she's having doubts. And so what happens in doubts is the enemy begins to question your faith in God. 
are you sure this thing is working? Are you sure you are not? And the thing is, because the devil knows that, or yeah, the devil knows that you are such a Christian. So he knows that you won't go to, you know, <laughs> it's funny that sometimes when I'll go, even like in the US here, which is so like interesting, you will see some signs of people saying, they'll show like some signs of like coming here, prayers for instant husband, prayer for instant wealth. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, this one instant, how instant is this? You see that if I just go there now, I just enter the place, they pray for me, Pam, as I come and one gentleman will just be like, will you be my wife? <laughs> so the truth is, there is other options, but the enemy would not tempt you with those type of options. You understand? For example, like, I cannot be tempted for the most part, okay, by going to like maybe a shrine or like, so he won't tempt you by that. But he will just like bring in it, bring it in subtly, like, this your whole, are you sure your standards are not too high that you want a Christian man or a Christian woman? You know, what of if he doesn't go to church, but you know, he just, he's a kind man. He values kindness. Or are you sure this your value of like, what is there? Like if you just tweak the numbers a bit at work, like no one's gonna be angry. And to be honest, like many times the things that we're waiting for, there are options. Can we, can we agree with that? There are options. Like if you decide not to wait, there's always something else that you can follow. And so if I look at Sarah's story, Sarah is like, let's see. What, so this is how I'm thinking about Sarah. Again, the Bible does not say. So Sarah is like, you know, there was no test in those days. There wasn't any medical intervention to make you know who has the problem. So Sarah is like, I didn't even know. You know, she might be thinking, so maybe this Abraham is the one that has the problem. I don't know because the Bible is always saying Sarah is the barren one. They never say Abraham was barren. So Sarah is like, let me test this thing. Because the reason why I'm thinking about this this way is that if Sarah really, really wanted the child, when, you know, the Haggai had the child, she would have kept the child and driven Haggai out instead of driving the both of them. But why did she drive out the both of them? So anyways, so Sarah is like, let me test this whole situation. So she tells, she talks to Abe. We're calling him Abe for the purpose of this conversation. Like, hey, how fun, I was going on. You know, I've been thinking about this whole pregnancy thing. I know that you've been talking about this trust in God. I get that, but you know, there's nothing wrong if we just like, just go into our maid. And maybe that's what God, in fact, the enemy will even make you think that it's what God's, even though in your heart of heart, you know that this is not what God is saying. But then she's like, maybe you should just sleep with Hagar, you know, Hagar. And Abe is like, yeah, you know, Abe is a very gentle guy. He doesn't like problem. Even when he was quarreling with his, his, his men were quarreling with his brother's lords, um, servants. He was just like, let, just go, let there be peace, you know? So when his wife, Sarah, just came and he was like, will you sleep with that girl? I was like, yeah, I will do it for sake of peace. So again, you know, no pun intended, but I'm just trying to make this practical, okay? So Hagar or Hagar, she sleeps with Abraham. We don't know whether it's once or twice, but she, she puts in like Abraham scored gold on, gold on her. Meanwhile, <laughs> Sarah has been sleeping with Abraham for years, nothing. <laughs> and then it was Hagar's turn. And then Pam immediately, she had a child, you know, and then, you know, Ishmael was born. Where I'm going to, sorry, I didn't mean to, no pun intended there, but you are, we are all adults, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, um, <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is like, if you read the story of Hagar, the Bible says that when Hagar left the house of Sarah and Abraham as a result of her being, you know, disrespecting her boss and her boss was like, your own is getting too much. You now think you know everything, so leave. You know what the Bible said? God told Hagar that he was going to bless Ishmael too. And he was going to make Ishmael a great nation. Didn't you read that in your Bible? Can we read that? Do you remember that? God told, God told Hagar, he said, I'm going to bless Ishmael and make him a great nation. Now, what I'm trying to make, the point I'm trying to make here is that there are options that are good too but there's the promise of God that is worth waiting for. So guilt, let's go to the next, the next phase right after that. Stage six is the abandonment phase where you are just like, you know what, it's fine. Don't worry about it again, Lord. 
we have come to a place where I have built a relationship with you. I'm okay. Don't worry. Don't worry about the child anymore. Let's read Genesis chapter um, Genesis chapter 18. <laughs> this one is very interesting. Can I have somebody read? Abby, please, if you don't mind. Um, I know you wanted to read first the last time, but if you're still comfortable reading. Genesis chapter 18 from verse 12 to 15. Genesis 18, 12 to 15. We'll be done soon in case some of us are hungry. Some of us need to go grab dinner. Um, Genesis 18, 12 to 15. Okay. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, wherefore did Sarah laugh saying, shall I of surety bear a child, which am old? Is anything to add for the Lord? Mm. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee, according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Mm. Genesis, the other part, thank you so much. I'll be one more verse. Genesis chapter 17, verse 18. Genesis chapter 17, verse 18. Genesis chapter 17, verse 18. And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. All right. Thank you so much, Abby. God bless you. Very sweet voice, by the way. Very sweet voice. Um, <laughs> all right. So um, what you were reading there in Genesis chapter 17, verse 18, God was telling Abraham still. See, because the Bible talks about God's word going forth. And it will not come back to him void until it has accomplished that which he sent it for. So when God makes a promise, you can go south, east, west. You will still come back because God is still going to make that promise work. And Abraham said to God, and God said to Abraham, God is giving him this promise. I'm going to make of you a great nation. You're going to be amazing. Blah, blah, blah. Abraham is like, you know what, God, don't worry. Let Ishmael live before you. We have, we have helped you. Ah, we have helped you perform the miracle since you were coming too late. And it's okay. I know you have other things busy. You know, you were taking care of, um, you know, other people in the world. You know, maybe you were taking care of the people in Tower of Babel. All the things are just happening. So we've helped you. We figured it out. Don't worry about it again. And God is like, no. Oh. The other one is um, Abraham. When, I mean, Sarah. When God told Abraham, Sarah was inside. Sarah laughed. So let me, let me pause here. Why do you think, it, just from, apart from lack of faith, why do you think Sarah laughed? I just want one or two contributions to that. Why, why do you think, did she laugh out of like anger or she just laughed out of, what are these ones saying? Just maybe one thought on why you think Sarah laughed. Maybe somebody who has not had the chance to say anything. Why do you think Sarah laughed? Just a thought. <laughs> Sarah laughed she thought that she was too old to have it. <laughs> oh, my darling. What's your name? Maya. Maya. Oh, nice to meet you. Maya, you're so smart. Thank you for answering. Yes, definitely. I love that answer. She laughed because she was too old. Wow. And you see, that is so powerful because... We, talk, we just talked about the facts. Emanuela, you talked about the facts are obvious. But then what the Holy Spirit was, you know, doubt and unbelief. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ma. What the Holy Spirit was ministering to me when I was reading this scripture is that generations before that, if you look at the generation of like Noah, they were having kids at like 350 years of age. 250 so if you go look at like if you go look at genealogy genealogies you know at that time you will hear that they will say and he lived on to 250 and he had a child because sarah laughed and she said can i even have pleasure and can my husband even like can abraham even have any child so she was considering both of them but if you go back and read in history you realize that there was the thing that she thought could never happen had happened before 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. There were men in her genealogy or in her ancestry that were giving birth to child or children at the age of 250, and Abraham wasn't even that age yet. The second to last stage, the last stage, and this is very interesting, is a call to service and sacrifice. And this one is like the hardest stage. In fact, you know how they say that there is, whenever it's about to break, whenever it's about to be daybreak, there's much more. I've not, I've not proved it, so I don't know, but I've heard it before. Like the, the, um, the night is darker when it's about to be break. Or let's just think about the one that we're most familiar with, like when it's about to rain, the clouds get really thick, right? Let me talk to you a bit about the call to service one and sacrifice. The call to service one and sacrifice, we see, we'll not be able to read because of time, but you can read at your spare time. We see it in Genesis chapter 18, when Abraham was asked to, you know, um, show hospitality to the angels that had come to visit him. The one that struck me most was the one in Genesis chapter 20, verse 17, when Abimelech wanted to take Sarah as his wife and God appeared to him in a gym and I was like, don't try it. And the Bible says that Abraham prayed for the house. In fact, let's read it real quick so that we, we're not making things up. Genesis chapter 20, verse 17. We're almost done here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Genesis chapter 20, verse 17. Um, if anyone can read for us, that would be really great. Genesis chapter 20, verse 17. Um, okay, let me read real quick since I'm there. So Abraham prayed unto God. And God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maid servants. And they did what? And they bear children. By this time, Abraham did not have children, but he was praying for other people and they were having children. You see, the part of the call to service and sacrifice is that at this point, you have lost strength. You know, waiting seems like you're at one point, but waiting takes energy. Waiting takes a lot of energy, mental energy, sometimes physical energy, sometimes just it saps you out sometimes. And that's why the Bible talks about in Isaiah 40 verse 31, he says, those that wait on the Lord, if your strength was not going to be depleted, thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, the Bible will not say you will renew strength. The Bible knew or knows that waiting is so hard and you would need to you know, renew your strength. That's why he said, those that wait on the Lord, they will renew their strength. And so imagine Abraham being at that place where he's trusting God for something and he's seeing others carry the same miracle through his own life. Can you pray for your sister who needs a husband and you, you are still in the waiting room and watch her get proposed and get engaged and get married and be having her own children and still be okay with it? Can you watch someone else? Can you contribute to someone else moving forward, getting a scholarship or you know, paying their school fees when you don't have any money again in your account? Can you be a light to somebody? Can you donate your candle to somebody even when your own house is dark? And I know we live in a world of, ah, love your neighbor as yourself. You love yourself first and then you do it. But we also know the Bible talks about Job prayed for his friends. And what happened? He received his own breakthrough. So Abraham is in a place where he's seen other people take their miracles that he prayed for. That's why I want to encourage you. The fact that you are in a place of waiting does not mean that you cannot be a blessing. A lot of us are suspending our blessing capacity that God has given us until when we get the miracle. Oh, when I have a child, I will take care of other people's children. Oh, when I have money, I will contribute to that project. Oh, when I get married, I will encourage single women. Your capacity to bless is not in your blessing. Sometimes it's in your weight. And so there's a call to sacrifice. But the last stage, which is my favorite stage, and we're going to pray on it. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. I want somebody in the audience to read for me. And it's funny because that stage the second to last stage came in Genesis chapter 20, verse 17. 
or the final stage, which is our seventh stage, I can call it perfection stage, is in Genesis chapter 21, verse 1. If you are a Christian and you have your Bible, can I ask you to open that verse right now? Everybody. Can I even ask that we read it together? Um, I want us to read this five, or maybe do we read it together or we read or have one person? Maybe because of the delays, let's have one person read that. Uh, verse one? Yes, ma. Genesis 21, verse one. And the Lord visited Sarah as he, as he has said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Ah, thank you. Spoken. Ah, I get, I get chills by reading that scripture. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. Ah, that as he has said is just very powerful to me because somebody God has said and you have forgotten. God has said and you have lost hope. But Genesis 21 verse 1 is coming into manifestation. This is where we begin to pray. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 23, verse 23. For my God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Will he not do it? Has he spoken? Will he not perform his word? I'm not going to waste time again. You see, when I was preparing for this, I personally am in a wait. There's no, there's no, there's no distance. But some, everybody... Either you have come out of, you have just come out of a weight and I'm not trying to put you on a, I'm not trying to like put negative prophecy on you or you are just about to enter a weight or you are in the middle of a weight. But know that Genesis 21 verse one is part of the story. And the Lord, sorry, my check, numbers 23, 19. Thank you for correcting. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and he did unto her. Has, as he had spoken. God will visit you. And the last stage is the stage of visitation. I want us to do an exercise on this call. God is not done yet. If he said it, he will do it. 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 He he will do it. I want you to, you know, just by faith, pick up somebody on this call and I'm going to give us one minute and just pray in the spirit for that person. If you are not able to pray in the spirit, just ask that God will grant them what is their heart desire. Just in one minute, let me give you an opportunity because I believe in community prayers and I know that it's going to happen as we pray. Father, I thank you. Now I'm praying. Father, I thank you for everyone on this call right now. Everyone waiting for you, oh God Almighty, for a marriage. I declare this done unto them. Everyone waiting for a child. We declare this open, oh God, open doors. Everyone waiting for a job. Everyone waiting for an opportunity, oh God. Everyone waiting, oh God Almighty, for a breakthrough. We release the power of the Holy Spirit on this call today. We declare that the doors are open. We declare that doors are open. We declare that testimonies are flooding in. We declare that new things are happening, oh God. Let there be light, oh God Almighty. We pray, oh God Almighty, as a family, oh God. We declare, oh God Almighty, that our time of visitation is now. The Bible says, for the time to favor Zion is now. For the time to favor her is now. Yeah, the same time has come to favor Zion. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 84, he says, for the Lord God is a son and a shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them who are upright with him. Mane broko sete ne brahande ne ne bosha. Rikando no bosha ke re ba 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 ne broko sikande ne ne bosha. Rikando no broko sikande ne brahande ne ne bosha. We believe it is so, God Almighty. As we have prayed, oh God Almighty, we declare this. There will be signs and wonders, and there will be miracles in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. One thing Thank I want to say here is, as you wait, one thing that's most important, what you would see in all the stages of the waiting is that God was always speaking. Don't take this, the word of God for granted in your life. God's Amen. word will give you strength as you wait. Don't Amen. wait to until when you are tired before you go and drink from the river of God's word. Keep holding Amen. on to God's word. And God is going to make all grace abound to you. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed for this lady. And I know that miracles are going to happen for you Amen. as Amen. long as you still believe in Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to Thank ask you. my mommy from London to round us up in prayer. That's okay, mommy. 
Yes. I'm going to ask you to close us out in prayer. God bless you, Ma. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. The everlasting thing of glory, we just thank you. We worship you. We glorify your name. We thank you, Father, for filling also, Father, our names tonight. Father, we glorify your name. Accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Everlasting kingdom of uh, king of glory. We thank you for our daughter that you use mightily for us. He, she touches mm. everywhere, every look and corners. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we are so grateful. We pray that more anointing will continue to flow upon her in the mighty mm. name of Jesus. Amen. And we pray, I pray tonight, Father, because you are God of time, every time you, 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 you love to perform mm. things at your own time. Father, as we have learned today, mm. Through our mother Sarah mm. and, and our father Abraham, mm. when it was the time for them, you, you fasten it, you bring them mm. to promised land. Father Lord, I pray mm. for every one of us mm. here, those that are waiting, they're looking for job, mm. those that are looking for children, mm. those that are waiting for their house their husband and wives, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, you will perfect this miracle in their lives in the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. We know, Lord, that delay is not a denial. Yes, Lord, sir. in the name of Jesus, we pray at your own time, you will perfect all that concerning each and every one of us in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father Lord, Amen. I on this platform, we shall come and testify to your glory, just like Sarah uh, had, um, Anna did. Yes. And he said, uh, her soul magnifies the Lord. Yes. Our soul shall magnify the name of the Lord in the Amen. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you, we worship you, we are honor you. As thank we are you, going, oh Lord, we, we pray that next time we shall meet in peace and with good testimony in every mouth. In the mighty name of Jesus. But I will just thank you. We worship you. Thank Accept you, all our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Mommy, for praying. I know that we went four minutes over time. I apologize. Quickly, yeah. I know we have a couple people um, joining in here for the first time. I want to welcome you. Thank you so much for joining for the first time. Um, Nicole, you. I see you. Adekunle Jinnadu, thank you. Adobe, thank you. I see all of you just joining. I'm going to be doing shout out, but before I do that, I want to introduce what the workshop is real quick in one minute. The workshop is where you are today. In case you are wondering, how did I land here? We call this the workshop and we, we, we um, our Bible... Um, uh, Bible reference for this is from the scripture that talks about buy the truth and sell it not. So you can come here and be buying the truth, you know, um, buying the truth of God's word and using that to invest in your life. My name is Temi Olanion, like you probably, some people call me Buki, but my name is, you know, all of it together. Um, I, I work, I'm not a pastor, okay, please. <laughs> I, I work as a privacy risk manager at a tech firm called Meta. Okay, we have transitioned from what used to know us to at Meta. I live in California and I am God's child primarily. I love Jesus. And the purpose of this is because I want to share God's word to people. I want people to read God's word more. I want you to be able to take God's word at face value and not just leave your Bible on the bed, but carry your Bible to work, not physical Bible, but the word of God in your heart and causing it to manifest at your work, in your career, in every area of your life i love food specifically jollof rice um, oh my so God. i would be <laughs> i would be reaching out to you and getting to know you more so if you see me just texting you calling you it's because i want to get to know you more i wish we could be together in person but maybe hopefully you never know what's going to happen but i want to say thank you to every single person on this call in december we're planning um a lot of activities, so stay tuned. We're going to be making those announcements. But can I say a special thank you to every single person that joined today? Some of you, it was early your time. Some of you, I sent this to you just last night and you came. It shows how much value you place on God's word. And I want to sincerely honor you and appreciate you. Thank you so much. May God bless you and this honor that you have shown by coming into Bible study. 
I pray that God will visit you specially. And I hope you learned one or two things. Text me when you um you know if what something that you learned, something that you know, you know, um, you know, originated or like you know, just um, you know, you were able to relate to um with. And I thank you. I thank you. So now I'm going to be doing shout outs um to everyone on the call. So um, yeah, feel free to stay behind. But please, if um if you just want to put your name on the chat in case your name is not on your on your Zoom ID, that would be amazing. Meklit, I see you, girl, my girl from Chicago. Thank you so much. That's my sister for my Ethiopian, Ethiopian American sister. I love you so much. Such a golden heart. My mommy, big mommy, mommy Sarah Olaoye. I God bless you, ma. Thank you for being so enthusiastic about the call. I know you joined on Thursday because you thought it was going to be Saturday. I appreciate you and honor you, ma. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. My, my uncle, Pastor Stephen Ajiboye, thank you so much, sir, for your support. I appreciate you, ma. My big mommy, my special mommy from London, mom for like me, very wonderful woman of God. I love you, ma. I love this woman with my whole heart. Thank you so much, mommy. Antitai, I see you. I know you're the one having um, Olushola Adeleko, so I see you. I honor you and celebrate uh -huh. you. Thank you. So thank you very time. much. I'm but proud of you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Adobe, I see you. Thank you. I celebrate you. My 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 girl, not giving too much, but my sister, I love you. I honor you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate you for joining us such short notice. To my parents, thank you so much for being on the call. My mom oh, and my dad you. who taught me Bible study. My mom is telling us Bible stories and my dad as well. <laughs> um, so thank you. I honor and celebrate you. My mommy, thank you, Mom, thank you, sir. Thank you, Ma. My mommy, Mommy Rike from Ireland. I celebrate you, Ma. Thank you very much. You are such a good thank person. You, okay. More anointing in Jesus, my Lord. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah. My aunt, Auntie Ruth Ajiboye, I love you. I love you so much, Auntie. <laughs> thank you so much. Definitely one of my favorite aunties. I love you so much. Um, definitely um saw me when I was a child from when I was born till now. I love and honor you, Auntie. I appreciate you. Um, Nicole, oh my god, girl, such a special person you are. Such a we've had conversations. <laughs> special yeah, special yeah. person you you just have like a beautiful heart and i've heard so much about you on the back end just so you know fyi i'll tell you about that but girl much love i appreciate you thank you so much abby <laughs> <laughs> my sister from another mother i love you and honor you. you have such a sweet spirit from time i met you thank you so much for joining bible study thank you i honor you and appreciate you i love you so much thank you very much and to my Ghanaian brother chale <laughs> pastor bernard thank you so much thank you thank you for helping me get used to the san jose environment thank you for bringing me you know um company god bless you so much so i appreciate you um java i'm sorry you i know i wasn't supposed to say that in the open but <laughs> that's how i remember you um Adekume Junadu. god bless you thank you so much for joining <laughs> i know you probably don't want to hear that now but um thank you i really sincerely honor you and thank you for sending me those like videos to watch as i prepared for this meeting um thank you so much i've always respected you so much from you know even from college and i just it's such an honor to see you here like joining like you know this call Thank you so much. I honor you and celebrate you. Really, truly honor you. Um, I see Galaxy Note 855031. I'm not sure who that is, but I want you to know that I honor and celebrate you. And I thank you so much for joining. Thank you, everyone. Truly, truly thank appreciate you. you. This yeah. happens every two weeks. So I would see you in another two weeks by God's grace. We'll be having an amazing time in God's presence. Have an amazing week. And, you know, I want you to just meditate on Genesis chapter 21, verse 1, because mm. it's going to happen. Two months, too small. Amen. Two days, too small. Amen. God is able Amen. to make all grace abound towards you. Amen. I love you so much. And I appreciate you. Thank love you. Have you. Have a amazing weekend. Thank Bye. You. Bye. 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 We miss you. Bye. Oh, Bye. miss you too. Bye. <laughs> and, my, Bye. and my Maya, who talked on the phone, Bye. I don't know if you feel on the phone. Maya, love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. 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 I love you. Bye. 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 Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom. God bless you.